So Apple just announced their Mac Studio with the M1 Ultra chip, and the question is, is it finally time to go 8K? So ever since we first heard specs of the Canon EOS R5, everybody's been saying, what is the point of 8K, and my computer can't even edit in the first place. And for a long time, well, that's kind of been true. But with this new generation of Apple M1 chips, like the M1 Max and how the M1 Ultra, at its highest peak performance, they say you can have up to 18 streams of 8K ProRes 422. So of course, that is absolutely insane. And having 18 streams of 8K is, well, pretty much overkill for 99% of the editors out there. But that means that even with the M1 Max chip, which is essentially the M1 Ultra chip cut in half, that is nine streams of 8K. And I actually have the M1 Max laptop and I can say that it definitely lives up to the hype, at least working in the 4K workflow that I currently work in. So you may be thinking to yourself two things. Just because we have the processing power to now edit in 8K, what is the point of actually shooting in 8K? And also, what about the storage problem? Well, I will answer the second thing first because, you know, that's the most confusing way to do things. So with the storage, it might not be as big of an issue as you think. With the Hevik Kodak or HVEC, I'm gonna call it Hevik. Not sure if anybody else does. Maybe everybody else does. I think I've heard it somewhere. Anyways, with the H.265 Kodak, essentially your file sizes are cut in half, or at least that's been the case with the Sony a7S III because I switched over to it as soon as I got my new laptop. You may be thinking to yourself, well, isn't that Kodak extremely hard to edit for? Well, not with these new machines. They come with decoders or encoders or I don't know, it's some kind of coder. They make editing in this format very smooth. And in my experience, it's actually even smoother than editing in H.264. And don't worry if you're a PC guy, I'm pretty sure the new Alder Lake CPUs from Intel add these as well, but maybe double check on that for yourself. I don't believe you. So now that processing and storage is not an issue, then why not shoot an 8K? Now I'm not saying that you absolutely have to and that you need to go buy an 8K camera right now, especially if you don't have one. I'm not personally going to go buy an 8K camera anytime soon, but there are some benefits to shooting an 8K. So the first and most obvious is having the extra resolution to crop in. And it's not just cropping in on a subject because you don't have maybe the lens to reach there. It's also being able to add keyframes for steady zooms and pans. The second reason to shoot an 8K is well to future proof your footage. There was a time not too long ago that most people thought that 4K was completely unnecessary. And well, some people may still think that, but it is becoming more and more of a standard as time goes on. And I think the same thing will happen with 8K eventually. And if you're someone who likes to sell your stock footage, having 8K footage is gonna give you a big advantage moving forward. And while viewing 8K footage on your phone or even your TV might not seem like a big deal because people think, I don't have a huge TV, why do I need 8K footage? The more that these things become popular, 8K is gonna be important, especially for VR. And Canon has been telling you that with its lens releases. But those are just my thoughts of why you should start shooting in 8K, at least if you already had the camera with the capabilities. But what are your thoughts? Drop in the comment section below and let me know. Do you completely disagree with me? Do you see the potential like I do? And if you like this video, be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing. And until next time, peace.